Hello, hello, and welcome to a little video about the Unit 1 test review. Let's get started. Now, our domain, our domain is our set of x's. In this case, I did mean to write s for seconds, but I wrote h for hours by accident. But regardless, our domain goes left to right. Now, it looks like on the left side, I start out at 0, and on the right, I end at 10. And I know I end at 10 because that's, there it is, I'm drawing little dots. Okay. Let's do the same thing for range. Now, range is actually bottom to top. So there's the top of my graph. Okay. It looks like on the bottom, I start at 0, and at the top, I end at 8. Now, the graph is increasing, decreasing, both increasing, decreasing, or constant. Um, let's explain our reasoning. So, I see two types of intervals. First, I see this one right here. From left to right, my pen is going up. So I'm going to call it I for increasing. My increasing starts at 0 and ends at 4. The next type of uh, interval I have is this flat one right here. Now, that flat one, I'm going to call that constant. Now, the constant interval starts at 4, and it ends at 7. Lastly, I've got another increasing interval that starts at 7 and ends at 10. For questions 2 through 4, let's determine whether each relationship represents a function, and we'll explain why or why not. For number two, when it's a graph, what I do is I draw a line through it and see how many times do I cross this vertical line. It looks like my U-shaped graph crosses it twice. This means it's not a function. Fails the vertical line test. Crosses twice. Okay, let's check out the next one. For number three, for a table, we're just looking at our x's and making sure they do not repeat. If they repeat, they're not a function. So, number three is not a function. Let's check it out. These two negative fives repeat. So I'm going to say the x's repeat. The y's can all be the same number. It doesn't matter. It's the x's that are not allowed to repeat. Lastly, let's take a look at number four. For maps, that's what number four is. For those kind of problems, we want to make sure only one arrow is leaving every input. Looks like that's happening. So it's a function. So um, only one arrow leaves each input. Perfect. Okay. Number five. Consider the sequence. Here's the pattern. Let's describe it. Now when I look at this pattern, I notice sides. This shape has three sides. Four sides, five sides, six sides. So adding one side. Letter B, LOL, I am not drawing that. I cannot. I know I have some artists in my classroom. If you want to give it a shot, do it. But yeesh, mine look awful. Um, you probably saw me attempt to draw one during class time at the beginning of this unit. Letter C. I like to write the numeric sequence for the first six figures. So that means I want six empty spots. Okay. So my first figure is a triangle. And then I have a... Uh, square, a pentagon, a hexagon, but the pattern's increasing by one, so I'm just going to keep going. Seven, eight. Determine the number of sides for the twelfth figure. Okay, well that means I want to continue my pattern for six more, right? Because six plus six is twelve. So my seventh is nine, ten for my eighth, eleven for my ninth, twelve for my tenth, 13 for my 11th, and 14 
for my 12th figure. So if we were to attempt to draw this, we would draw a figure with 14 sides. I'm not even, I don't even know how to imagine that. <laughs> All right, target 1C. We're going to write the first five terms with a common difference of negative 0.6 and the first term of 0 0.7. So, 0 0.7 is my first term, so it goes right here. 0 0.7. Minus 0 0.6 is my pattern. So I am going to subtract 0 0.6 between every number. Let's do it. 0 0.1, negative 0 0.5, negative 1.1, and negative 1.7. For questions 7 and 8, we're going to identify whether each sequence is arithmetic or geometric, so through addition or through multiplication, and then we'll find its common difference or its common ratio. So the first thing that I like to do with these is I look for the arithmetic sequence and see if that works because that's always the easier one. So I like to do it first. The way we find our common difference, if it was arithmetic, is we would do second term minus first term. Well, 5 minus 40 is negative 35. Is 5 minus 35 0 0.625? No, that does not work. We really only have one other option. If it's not arithmetic, then it's geometric. Well, let's find its common ratio. To find its common ratio, this time we're going to do 5 divided by 40, which is 1 eighth, or if you prefer, decimals 0 0.1025. Oh, sorry, 0 0.125. Okay. Let's check out number eight. Again, it's only either arithmetic or geometric. Let's try arithmetic first. For that, let's find the common difference. So I'm going to do negative five minus six, so second term minus first term, and I got negative 11. Is five minus 11 negative 16? Yes. Negative 16 minus 27, uh, sorry, minus 11 is negative 27. Yes. And then if I do it one more time, negative 38. Perfect. It's arithmetic. And our common difference is negative 11. Okay. On the test, I'm not going to have an either. It's going to be one or the other. All right? So there's going to be a pattern. Number nine. For the following sequence, let's write an explicit formula. First, let's remind ourselves that this is an explicit formula. The only things we need to find are A1, our first term, and D, our pattern. Well, A1 is easy to spot. It's 10.3. I'm going to write that down immediately. Now let's find our common difference D. In order to find our common difference D, we do second term minus first term. And I get negative 7. So I put down minus 7 and minus 1. Now that is the same thing as 10.3 plus negative 7 and minus 1. Whichever way you feel like writing it is correct. Number 10, I'd like us to write a recursive formula. Now, the recursive formula is as such, and the only thing we're looking for is the common difference. So I'm going to start off my equation like this, because I already have that an minus 1. Let's find the common difference by doing second term, negative 13, minus first term, negative 24, which gives us positive 11. So plus 11. On number 11, we're going to determine the 30th term of the sequence. In order to do that, in our calculator, we take this equation. Well, we're going to put this part in our calculator. But 
into the equation that we were given, we're going to plug 30 into n. That goes right into my calculator, and I get an answer of 93. Remember, we're not putting letters in our calculator. It does not know that stuff. Number 12. A baby giraffe measures 200 centimeters at birth. Every day thereafter, the baby grows 2 centimeters in size. Let's represent this as a table. Well, the baby giraffe starts off 200 centimeters tall. So that's going to be in month one. In month two, he grows two more centimeters. Plus two. And then we continue adding two. You know me, I got to label everything. So we're going to put all those plus twos is in there. I like to see it. Right. Letter B asks you to write the explicit or recursive formula. I prefer the explicit, um, but I'll do both. Here's the recursive, and then in this part, I'm going to write the, uh, the explicit. So the recursive formula only requires our common difference, which is 2. Now, our... Um, Explicit formula starts off with the first term, which is 200. And then our common difference, plus 2 and minus 1. Now, the reason I prefer the explicit is for letter C. Predict the height of the baby giraffe after 8 days. Now, if you were doing the recursive, you would have to, you know, keep adding until you got to day 8. Otherwise, we could just plug this into our calculator with 200 plus 2 and then 8 minus 1, which gives us 214 centimeters. Now explain my reasoning. I plugged 8 into the explicit formula. Now, let's say you didn't use the explicit formula. Let's say you continued the table. That's what you would write. I continued the table. I followed the pattern. All right, so I want, I want you to use your language, your English language, to tell us what you did. Okay. If you have any questions about this review or anything else about this unit, please ask me or whoever else is helping you out in math. Have a wonderful rest of whatever day it is for you. Mm, bye!